Hey guys, it's Norm. And Adam. And we are back in the cave. The cave. The cave is undergoing some reconstruction. You might have seen on episodes of Still Untitled that you had shelves put in yes. uh, while we're recording the podcast. And they're almost set up. But they are almost set up. Uh, it's a long and ongoing process. Uh, I have filled the shop with 13 Billy bookcases from Ikea. The Billy is the the inexpensive way into a glass front cabinet. Yeah. I think the case is like 120 bucks and then the doors are a little bit extra, you buy them one at a time. And I have added a modification of actually adding uh, LED, LED lighting, strip lighting. Don't buy these at a store. At a store, they're about $10 a foot. On Amazon, it's a dollar a foot. Wow. So you'll save much cheaper. 90% <laughs> of the expense by going on Amazon. It's, it's tough to compete. Yeah. And free shipping, of course. Yes, exactly. But we're here to talk about what's in the shelves. And behind us on this particular shelf is a collection of props that you, replicas that you've made. Well, so uh, yes, uh, replicas and actual props. So um, yeah, I never know what kind of movie is I'm going to latch on to. Mm -hmm. I never know what sort of prop is going to jump out at me as something I, I really, really want. You don't know as in like when you're watching a movie, you don't know if that's going to resonate like five years later. Yeah, and, and there might be movies with tons of cool props in them, like Chronicles of Riv Riddick, that I don't care at all about. Right, you don't want those glasses. No. I have no interest whatsoever. But when The Born Identity came out, which I think is 2004, 2003? It's early 2000s, yeah. yeah um, I got really into Jason Bourne. I love the idea of the go bag. Now, this actually has a predecessor, which is the movie Spartan. It's a lesser known David Mamet film starring Val Kilmer, uh, and it's phenomenal. I can't recommend Spartan enough. Right. And in Spartan, if you watch the DVD extra materials, Val Kilmer is kind of like a stand-up comedian when he does the, the commentary. But he talks about how he uh, had, they had a couple of special forces consultants on the film. He plays a special forces mm -hmm. commander on a mission in Spartan. And he has a little uh, bag and he calls it his go bag. And he said he had all the things in there that a special forces guy would need. And I love the, I mean, obviously I'm a toolkit fanatic. I love yes. the idea of you have everything you need in one place. Right. Most and, of us have our emergency ration stuff, you know, the water and right. some band-aids. These guys have cash the, and guns. Well, and so actually I met uh, on, on Mythbusters, we, we did a sniper special with a, 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 an incredible marksman, Dave Lewinog, who uh, did some tours. Uh, and actually had a go bag. He wasn't able to tell me some of the things that were in it because it's not for civilian knowledge. He did say it was whatever you needed to get from wherever you were to any, any single point on the planet within 36 hours and be able to survive there. And so it's, it's not simply an over the shoulder thing. You might need all sorts of different gear, weather and stuff. Uh, and I've always found that process, that, that, that concept really, really exciting. And so in The Born Identity, at the beginning of the movie, he, he, he wakes up, he's yes. kind of getting his and memory his back. He has it, a chip. He has a chip in his hip and he goes, uh, he figures out that it's a bank in Zurich and he goes to the bank and he opens up this bank box. Right, safe deposit box. A safe deposit box and in it is all of this stuff, all of these passports and money and stuff that obviously from his mm -hmm. former identity, he's still trying to piece it together. Yeah. But I love the idea that this is like a secret stash that allows you to be anyone and do anything. It's enough money and identities mm -hmm. to escape to anywhere. So he dumps it all into a burn bag, which is, I guess, for documents in a, in a, in a bank, Anything you don't, anything you want to get rid of, you put in a burn bag and they take and it and they incinerate it. it so the record's totally gone. So, I actually looked into making a burn bag from the Born Identity, and I never got around to it because I didn't have enough reference. Sometimes if I can't get enough precise reference, I'm not even interested in starting. Hmm. And then I came across a guy who had one of the actual burn bags. I think they made three for the film. So this, this bag right here. Wow, along with the trash bin. It, it, this is the trash bin from the bank in Zurich. And this is the burn bag from the bank sequence. So when, when Bourne gets accosted by one of the security guys, red bag, red bag, on the ground, this is that red bag. Holy crap. I so know. this is actual movie prop. This is an actual movie prop. And you built then the replicas to fill the bag. Well, and, and so I, I, it, I didn't so much build as assemble, assemble, but we could take a tour through the replicas. This is one of my favorite props. I just, I really love, yeah, I really enjoy that I've got one of these. And um, I will tell you that there, there is a thing in the prop collecting community that some people, and I don't understand them, they like buying a movie prop of which there's only one, and then they like hiding it away from the world so that no one can see it. Huh. They actually kind of get off on having the only one of something. <laughs> 
that doesn't make any sense to me. Right. I have something like this, I wanna share it. So actually, uh, uh, fellow prop fabricator I know named Indy Magnoli uh, out of Australia, I actually gave him uh, all the reference material, uh, fabric samples, sizes, grommets, measurements, and he's actually producing uh, some, oh. some bags like this. Very of course, cool. I'll always have the original, but if other people want one, I want them to have one. Awesome. Sweet. So, so let's take a look at what goes in the All back. right. All right, Adam, you have all these prop replicas on the table. Yep. This one's actual prop. The actual bag. And let's start with just the money, because there's okay. a lot of money here. Okay, so uh, I frequent a forum, as we've talked about before, the Replica Prop Forum. Mm -hmm. um, and I had some screenshots. There's a lot of very close-up camera shots of the bag and its uh, contents in the film. When he's in the bank, he takes off the cover of, yes. the, of the safety deposit box and the camera sort of languorously pans over all the contents. So I started putting up screenshots of those contents on the RPF and then we started working through what was there. So for instance, the, the RPF is an international form. There are people in every country in the world. And this is actually just before, this film takes place just before the Euro yeah. came into being. So, so this money, a lot of money is obsolete. Tons of, most of this money is obsolete. But we were able to, with the help of a lot of international members, identify, oh, those are reals, those are Saudi Arabian money, these are kroner, mm -hmm. these are, uh, you know, Deutschmarks, etc. Um, and so I was able to find references. In fact, actually, now that this most of this money's discontinued, it's very easy to find high quality scans of it ah, because it's, it's not, not usable yeah, as money exactly. anymore. Um, I also solved uh, one legal problem by not printing anything on, on the, the back. back. I don't I don't want any trouble from <laughs> any organizations about counterfeiting. Uh, I just want it to look great. Um, and, and so you just uh, printed, you, just, you know, downloaded high res copies. And downloaded high res copies. Them, cut them out and created the band. Uh, yeah, exactly. And, each one of these bands, I don't think they're standard. I think they were all made by the art department of the film. Uh -huh. So I had to kind of color match each one. I did have an advantage. Having worked in the film industry, I did have a bunch of fake $100 bills. These are movie $100 oh, bills. Real funny money. Real funny money. These is in the movies when you see people handle $100 bills, these are them. And it says for motion picture use only, not, right, you right know, there, not yeah. legal tender, etc. cetera. Uh, and I had a bunch of those. I also had... Uh, and I always, I, I reach out to prop makers for stuff like this. Mm -hmm. I had a guy who makes money for the movies make me these British pounds. Custom make them for you. Well, he's got, no, he, this is a design he made for a film. And so I bought a bunch of stacks of them. And his technique is actually great. He takes uh, what looks like a real British pound. So this is a, this is a copy of a real British pound. Mm -hmm. um, and he, and I didn't print the back. Mm -hmm. And he comes up with a design that looks enough like it for a film. Yeah, there's the right elements. You have the queen on, on the right side. But you there's the no way that it could be confused right. with the real thing. It's good enough for American audiences. We, exactly. we can't tell the difference. Exactly. So in that, I figured out each of the types of money that were in the bag and the amounts of each kind of stack. So a lot of counting. For... I made tons and tons of lists. I keep really, this is, I just find this very entertaining to do on a plane. So mm -hmm. you know, each of the shots, I figure out how many of each one. Uh, and then I assembled it. So the money was one of the first challenges. Uh, the second challenge was the passports. And in fact, I reached out to each of these passports. Is a Jason Bourne actual passport under the different names that he has so are in these the film? Real passports. These are not real passports at all. These are actually film passports. Film. Again, it says clearly these are you know these are fake passports. These are for ah. film use only. They're exact replicas of Jason. All and they of have Jason stamps. Bourne's passports. They all have stamps. In fact, actually, yes, the uh, the guy who made these for me went so far as to posit where Bourne might have gone <laughs> and places in the course <laughs> of the film. I'm not kidding. This is how crazy this gets. Visas for different countries that. He's oh talking he in about Hong Kong in '97, and oh yeah, yeah. wow, absolutely. Um, so I've got yeah five of the passports here. Uh, then there is the, uh, I mean every one of these has a story about how hard it was to find. Um, I, I bought a, a pretty nice replica of a tag tag mm -hmm. Hauer, 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 tag Hauer link. That is the type of watch that Bourne uses in the film, and it's. You know, Tag and, and, and Omega, they all do many different designs yes. of every watch. So it's very hard to find a replica of exactly the dial arrangement. I had to, like, 
look through hundreds to find the one that I want. I wasn't going to spend the money on a real <laughs> yeah. tag just for this bag. You got um, a counterfeit watch. That's fine. Then there are things like this. Like yeah, this is that? this is actually a keychain. But at first, when I saw it, I thought it was one of those uh, cord holders. Oh yeah, the right. Titan. Like for yeah. camping equipment. Yeah. So I went looking for that, and I couldn't find it. And someone on the RPF said they recognized it because they had gotten it as a gift at an office, and it turns out to be a keychain made by a company to give out as gifts in an office. Why was that in the go bag? You know, just the art directors looking for things that look technical, that look kind of cool. Um, a Mac Hasp dongle. Uh, in, in the film, actually, on the Blu-ray, you're able to zoom in and see it actually read Mac Hasp on the back so of this. So this is the right model. The exact right model Donald. and color, translucent blue. Um, as I go deeper, you're going to think I'm crazier and crazier, but this is deeply satisfying. Um, this is a really weird, cheapo multi-tool that looks kind of cool with rulers on it. Um, turned out to be one of the easiest things to find. Someone came up with it in about a day or two, and it was like 14 bucks. Uh, cred uh, these, uh, these contact lens cases, mm -hmm. uh, bought three of these. Uh, this Uniball, of which you can see three in the bag, I ended up with four. Sure, it looks like something, you know, you buy at Target. A standard Uniball, except that this happens to be a discontinued Continued uh, uniball. Even and pens. Even pens models. turn out to be difficult to find. And in this, one member of the RPF's wife was a teacher. And you know, look, when people come <laughs> upon the uniball that they like, they buy a lot of yes, them. Of so he had a bunch and he traded this to me for a couple of other items. Um, and then uh, there is the, this is quite visible in the film. It turns out to be a, a French phone card. Phone card, yeah. Um, I replicated this, and actually I'll show you my replica of it. I've replicated it by, we actually were able to locate the original photo of Notre Dame and use oh, it like to make a photo. fake card. Yes, the stock photo. And then someone found- The real one, and that is pretty good. So that's, your that's, replica- This is my replica right. before I ever saw this in person. And this is the real thing. I did pretty darn well. Yeah. Um, I will say that it turns out people collect phone cards of oh. landmarks of everything. So you can find these on eBay from time to time. And over the years, um, I've managed to find two. Uh, I also have a, uh, again, made by someone who makes this for the movies. And on the back, it says, you know, not for real mm -hmm. use, not a real credit card. But I have these uh, Jason Bourne credit cards. That <laughs> and match they say the Jason ones. Bourne right there. Yep. Now I have somewhere a black card, an American Express black card, which isn't in the movie, but, but I figured Bourne would of course would have, have a black course. card. And then there's this, which turns out to be very hard to find, this Air France 2000. This is like a, a, an elite flying mm -hmm. uh, membership yeah. club card. It's very, very difficult to find this. So this is my recreation of it. That's basically uh, graphics that I printed, mm -hmm. then I laminated, then I cut, cut out yeah. in the shape of the credit card. It's not perfect, I'd like a better one. If someone out there has one, I'll trade you for it. Hmm. And then here, this is something that you couldn't find a perfect replica of, so yes. you just made yourself. So there are obviously, you know, he had these contact lens cases, yeah. and the implication is that he could change the color of his eyes for different passports. Um, I couldn't find the elegance soft color contacts in the original packaging. It's very difficult. They change this every yeah. year. So this is my Photoshop reconstruction on a different brand of contact uh, lens case. Taped it on. And they're, they're, they're spot on. Yeah. Um, and then lastly, uh, second to last, there's a, uh, a medical French medical card, which you can see in there. Um, I don't know what's in one of these, so I don't have anything in it, but that's my Photoshop file of the front and back of this. Uh, and I found, you know, when you're trying to find reference for stuff like this, you know, I see the name of it on, on mm -hmm. the screenshot, so I start doing it's searches exercise for Exercise in Google, yeah. Well, then I start doing searches for it on Flickr, which isn't indexed on Google, and that's where yeah. I hit pay dirt a lot of the time. Um, then there's one final piece of identification that you can see in the film, which is this, which is a French driver's license. Now, in all of my Google foo, I have not been able to figure out what the hell size a French driver's license is? <laughs> There's no photo of someone holding it in their hand or I, in the I, wallet. I've found people holding it in their hand, but honestly, this, this is about the variance you could figure out from this. So I painstakingly replicated um, the French driver's license down to yeah, the ID the picture, which is laminated, the stamps of the vehicles mm -hmm. he'd be allowed to drive, um, the anti-counterfeiting uh, uh, lines yes. on this as all my design to kind of match what it might look like. Uh, and then I printed up in these two different sizes because- Just in case. Again, if someone out there knows exactly how big a French driver's license is, please send it to us at tested.com so I can know, then I'll print it out for real. Um, 
And of course, you oh, have and of course, this is the other. Oh, sorry. There's several other things. <laughs> you have the sig. Um, this is actually a real stunt sig from the movie. This has ah. uh, got a certificate of authenticity. It's from the Born Identity. So whenever you see someone running with a gun, and mm. whenever you see someone doing anything with a gun in a movie that they're not actually shooting, right. It's a rubber gun. working. It's guns are heavy. They weigh like yeah. three or four pounds. You can get hurt, and they're expensive. You don't want to drop them. When it, people are throwing guns to each other all the time in the movies, no one ever really does that. Um, so these are rubber guns. You can see this one. This one actually, yeah, it, it bends and it's it's, it's, really it's squeaky. And... So this is one of one of the stunt pistols made for the movie. Um, the other thing you see in the movie a bunch are faxes yes. from Interpol. So this is an Interpol Wanted fax faxes. of looking for Jason and his girlfriend, played by uh, Franca Patenta. Patenti, Patenta. Um, that's my Photoshop reconstruction of it, even down to the fax ID across uh -huh. the top. Um, and then there are two very detailed. Uh, uh, faxes that you can see in several points in the movie. Uh, I did them in both color and black and white because you can see both versions in the film depending on on which portion of the film it's happening in. So your obsession with the film went beyond the go bag. Well, once there are more details to pick out, it's not Why an not? obsession with the film per se. Is more of just uh, it's again the, the figuring out of each of these details is like a bit of meditation for me. Just sitting there and like zoning in, and going yeah. to find something. It's it's a treasure hunt. And it's, it's about the hunt, not about the object itself. Mm -hmm. But it is very satisfying for me to have pretty much, I, I'm missing one pen from the bag, and there's a pocket knife in the Born Identity that it looks like a green Swiss Army knife, but it's not quite. And Does it, have, never, it doesn't have the logo. Doesn't it doesn't have the Victorinox logo uh, or Wenger, um, and it's a slightly different color green, but I've never been able to figure mm. out what it is, so this is as close as I can get. I'm two objects away from perfection so technically still a work in progress. <laughs> I guess so. And of course some gold bullion. Well, the, this, these, this gold bullion is actually, these are replicas, obviously. Um, purchased on eBay of one kilo of 999.9 uh, 9, 9 gold. Um, these are not visible in the movie. They're probably not in his bag, but I thought <laughs> It'd be if cool. you really had to get everywhere, yeah. You'd use, you'd, well, how you'd have would you, like where would we be able to use this? Maybe in the black market. We, we carve off a little oh, bit and put it onto a scale. <laughs> okay. I, I don't, if it's real gold, it's going to be mighty soft. You yeah. can probably bend this with your fingers. Yeah. Um, so this is my assumption of something that would be in there. And it, I, it goes out of canon, as it were. But I thought it should be there. It took a little, little bit of liberty. I also have a, a really nice replica of the shot of yeah. Jason and his girlfriend. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, this I purchased a vintage Air France ticket thing. Oh, wow. um, at some point in my research, I came across uh, a ticket jacket like this. So I purchased this to go in the case as well. Uh, sometimes I drift out of canon just because I think that it deserves to have this. And that's me thinking like an art director. Very cool. Uh, so that's Jason Bourne's go bag. Absolutely. What would you put in your go bag? Um, well, I, I don't think I'd have anything that hurt people in it. <laughs> I, you know, I'd have a Leatherman. Uh, I don't go anywhere without a flashlight. You know, yep. I, I this is I use it like twenty times a day. Strong laser. Uh, strong late. <laughs> um, yeah, you know what? We have we'll have to do a segment about what I'm always carrying on my person because it is a very specific set of objects that I use for survival. Very cool. Thank you, Adam. Absolutely. And we'll have more from the shelves in the cave in a future edition of Inside the Man Cave. Absolutely. Red bag on the ground. <laughs>